Welcome to the Careers and Employability Online Guide to Writing a Winning CV. CVs are easy documents to produce, but difficult to get right. Before we begin our step-by-step -step guide to writing a CV, it'll be useful to run through some do's and don'ts. OK, let's start looking at James Parker's CV as a typical CV that students produce and look at how we can make it better. This is James's CV. As you can see, James provides the essentials, but could sell himself much more strongly than is the case at present. If we look at his CV, we can see that he's made some fundamental mistakes. Here is a quick run through of the areas that could be improved. The words curriculum vitae could be deleted, as it's obvious what the document is. Personal details could be presented much more efficiently in relation to the space taken on the page. Some of the information doesn't need to be included. Date of birth, nationality and marital status is all optional information. Moving on to the education section. This needs to be presented in a different order. That is, degree first and working back in time. Always put the focus on information that is most relevant to your next step. In this section, the most relevant information relates to James's degree course, so this is what should take the lead. Work experience could be presented in a different order and more could be made of his part-time and summer work experience. These are great vehicles to demonstrate skills to potential employers. His industrial placement is highly relevant to his next step, so really this needs to go on page one. Same again for technical skills. The skills section itself is very superficial, and at this point is adding very little to his CV. The interest section is okay, but as we'll see, there's other information that could be included here. As a space saver, the full details of your referees needn't be provided at this stage, but it's not a problem if you choose to include them. Finally, the presentation is a little lacklustre. This aspect could be worked on to make the CV much more attractive and inviting to read. So, those are some quick points about James's original CV. Let's get on with making it better, and we'll look at doing this section by section. Welcome to part 2 of the Careers and Employability Guide to Writing a Great CV. In part 1, we looked at James's original CV and highlighted the areas that could be improved. Here, we'll look at how James has worked on his CV to make it better. Firstly, personal details. This information needs to be prominent and at the top of page 1. This is where an employer would expect to find it, so don't tuck this information away at the bottom of the second page. James has included his address, telephone numbers, and an email address. If you're providing an email for contact, then to be sure to include an email account that you use regularly. Additionally, make sure that your email address looks and sounds professional. Remember, everything that is included on a CV says something about you as an individual. If your personal email is a little too personal, then set up a new account. This will be the one that you'll use for all your job-related correspondence. You can also see that some information, although optional, has been included. In this case, James has opted to include date of birth and nationality. Remember, this information doesn't need to be provided if you don't want to do so. OK, moving on to the profile. There's some debate on the effectiveness of profiles. Some people like them, some people don't. However, in this case, James has opted to provide three key points that he wants the employer to know before they get into the detail of the CV. What James is trying to do here is summarise his key selling points before the reader gets into the body of the CV. Moving on to the education section. What you'll notice about this section is that the order and emphasis has been completely reversed from the original CV. Here the emphasis is directly on James's current course of study and is now providing some key information. In other words, some indication of the content of his degree and final year project. One big change to notice about this section is that GCSEs have only been given one line and a summary provided in relation to the number and level of passes. This isn't to say that these qualifications aren't important, it's just that they aren't as relevant to James's next step as his degree. A-levels, on the other hand, have been included, along with grades. Many graduate recruiters will also use UCAS points as one of the baseline recruitment criteria in their initial recruitment sift. The next section to look at is the work experience section. This section focuses on James's industrial placement. This is given a separate billing, whereas in the original CV, this aspect of James's experience was lumped together with his other part-time and holiday work experiences. 
By doing this, due emphasis can be given to experience that is directly relevant to the job and career area that he is focused on after completing his degree. As you can see, an overview of the placements is provided and some bullet points focus the reader on key points. You'll notice that each bullet point begins with a positive verb, written in the past tense as this experience has already been completed. Verbs such as planned, analysed and trained are very efficient in communicating meaning and helps the employer understand what James actually did during his placement. The key point here is that you should be aiming to focus the reader on tangible outcomes and achievements throughout your CV and using these types of words are very effective in facilitating this. If we jump to page 2 for a moment, you can see that James has taken a similar approach but has provided less information. However, the key message here is to focus the reader on achievements and skills, whatever the level or status of the job done. So, back to page one. Let's look at the technical skills section that James has inserted into his CV. This is a section that is most relevant to students on technical degrees such as engineering or computing. Often employers in these industries will have some specific requirements in relation to knowledge, for example software, hardware and operating systems and the like. It makes sense to put this information on page one. Again, it's all about focusing the reader on information that they will want to know. The next section to look at is the skills section. This section is an optional one, but James has decided to highlight some very specific transferable skills within his CV. The content of this section can and will change depending on the vacancy applied for. In this instance, Although James has inserted an IT or technical skills section, he will be using this CV more widely. And so to this end, he's emphasised skills such as presentation and customer service. What you'll notice about this section is that he writes about his skills using positive verbs again and provides some very tangible examples of where the skill has been demonstrated. Compare the content of this section with that of the original CV. OK, we're getting towards the end of the CV now, and hopefully the employer is still reading. An interest section is generally the final section to be included in a CV, but no less important for that. Don't dismiss what you do in your leisure time, as the activities that you carry out here can provide a great vehicle to demonstrate skills and achievements. In James's case, he's expanded a little bit on the information contained in his original CV, particularly in relation to the hiking club. Finally, references. The general rule here is that if you have space, you should be looking to provide the contact details of your referees. Just make sure you have the permission before including this information. And if not, then simply typing references available on request will be sufficient. So there you have it. CVs. Easy to write, but difficult to get right. I hope this guide has been useful to you, and that it helps you to produce a CV that does the job that it's supposed to do. In other words, get you the interview. That's a whole different ballgame, and we'll cover this in later Camtasia tutorials.